Hello there, a very warm welcome to you. It's Nick here. Thank you for clicking on this video to see another batch of 50 ZX Spectrum games we've reviewed on the channel. This is 601 through to 650. If you're enjoying the videos uh, and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. And if you want to become a member to help the channel grow, then please consider hitting that join button as well. Hit the join button to see what it's all about. You're not committed at that stage. So let's get on with it. And we start off with Mickey Mouse, yes, Mickey Mouse of Disney. In this game, it's quite a large sprite. It's okay, but it's not very addictive. You control Mickey Mouse, as I just said, and you're going up this tower, defeating many spooks and demons as you go up. Um, it's really aimed at smaller kids, really, but the graphics are really, really good, and I think young children would like this quite um, uh, well. It represents uh, Disney quite well. Donald Duck doesn't feature. It's just Mickey Mouse versus uh, various meanies. Open that door if you can. Popeye. Now, this is a large sprite game by Don Priestley. He did quite a few. I prefer Traptor, to be honest with you. Um, now, it is a large sprite. Uh, Popeye looks like he's had a stroke or something, but it just moves so, so slow. And when uh, Bluto bounces into you, uh, like he's coming here, it's a bit hard to get out of the way. Three levels, but I prefer um, other of the large sprite games to uh, this one. Um, I found it a little bit annoying. It's not really good representation of Popeye, but it's quite clever, I suppose, in what it actually does. Jungle Warrior. Now this game is really cool. It's not like flip screen. It doesn't scroll with the character. But what's good about this is the detailed graphics are one thing. It plays quite well. It's quite a good learning curve. But the guy can also swim as well. So if you find various water, you can jump into that. And I think I would have played this quite a lot back in the day if I've actually uh, had it. So really good attention to detail. And this one is quite worth um, tracking down, I would say. Jungle Warrior. Make some time for it. There's electric eels, but are quite a lot to solve in this as well. Just to go, we're going to cover quite a lot of homebrews here, and uh, like uh, this one, most of them are quite brilliant. You're in this bike and the screen does lean to a degree, so you know, uh, close racing, try and get to the front. You control Maureen Miles, she's just a gal, over a number of laps in um, sort of like a race championship type thing. It's not the quickest game in the world, but it's really, really smooth, and I enjoyed playing it. Shut that one down, just a gal. I'm just a gal that can't say no. Did it, did it, did it. Barmy Burgers, based on the arcade cabinet, of course, of Burger Time. This one plays quite well. I think it's a programming basic, though, so sometimes the keys might catch you out if you're not exactly in line with the ladder or so forth. You're being chased by these uh, chilies and that egg. It represents burger time uh, quite well. It's not the greatest game in the world but if you're after burger time you can't get um, too arguative with uh, this one here. Free burgers please. They're massive burgers and you're a chef and you can fire pepper um, to get extra um, spaces. Now Popeye, another terrible um, uh, Popeye game here. Popeye 2 in fact. It plays a bit better than the first one and uh, believe it or not this is the best of the Popeye games in the trilogy. Um, it's um, You've got to get to the top of the building works on this one, collect all the spinach and at the end have a fight with uh, I think um, some kind of goon. Um, Popeye is very see-through here, um, plays very similar to the Amiga version but both of them aren't really that good. Uh, better games are available. Here's Drift, another homebrew with some speech on it as well. You need to be a bit good at this game in learning how to drift around the corners but look at the shading on the car. Um, listen to the uh, the car sounds, this is on the 128k and if you do perform um, a perfect drift, the word drift comes up which I only seem to be igniting a few letters here. But you need a bit of practice on what this one to get the best out of it. Stay within the cones um, it, um, it's a skill game so you can't just jump in as a newbie and be good straight away so one for the professionals I think this one Outlaw, based on the arcade cabinet of Gunsmoke. Uh, it's not as good as Gunsmoke. The character's a little bit uh, floaty, but it's okay, I suppose, without being spectacular. We'll come to another Gunsmoke uh, clone in uh, a little while there. But uh, take out all the Desperados. I mean, what the weak bit of this game is, the ender level bosses are really easy to take out. They're no challenge whatsoever. So get playing the whole thing seems a little bit arduous as you go for four wanted men. Popeye 3, uh, this is the worst of the three games, Wrestle Crazy. Popeye has been kidnapped by some intergalactic alien syndicate and he's been forced to wrestle various aliens, but it's unlikely you're going to get past this first one. Plays very different to the Commodore Amiga version, but both are rubbish. Um, here you're fighting a Xenomorph, I do not know why. The best bit about it is the animated crowd, look at them move. 
Um, but you know, you can't base a, ca uh, a game just on on that alone. Um, some good animation, but the uh, the gameplay is severely lacking. Automated Cave Explorer. This is another homebrew uh, based on Boulder Dash, of course. Uh, nice colours on this one. I like that you control this uh, robot. So if you like Boulder Dash, you want something a, a bit modern, a bit more revamped, then this is the one for you. It doesn't offer a great deal more, but um, you know. It's a, it's a puzzle game and it will keep you occupied for quite some time. Nice graphics, uh, nice sound on this one. Can't really fault it, a real nice homebrew automated cave explorer. Hooray! Right, another large sprite game by Don Priestley and better than uh, Popeye. This is Benny Hill's Madcap Chase. There's various different levels here. The first one, you've got to get this woman's washing off her line without being caught by her and put them all in a linen basket. Now, there's a few screens you need to run across from one to the other. If you don't time it right or judge the distances, you will bash into stuff a bit like that. It's very comical. It's a lot of fun to be had on this game. I would say track this one down. Uh, Konomi's Tennis. Um, tennis is really hard to represent on the uh, ZX Spectrum or 8 bits in general, but the advantage of this one is um, I, at least you can hit the ball once you get used to it. On quite a lot of other games like Match Point, I was going game after game without actually hitting the ball at all. So if you're into tennis, it might be worth tracking this one down. I wasn't overly impressed with it, but you can get a little bit of a rally going. It's very, very uh, slow, but you know, uh, they've done the best that they could possibly can, I suppose. Gandalf, another homebrew and a really really good one. Now what's good about this is check out the sound, the music, but look, you don't see this very often. Um, a multiple colours in a single sprite, control Gandalf, very heavily influenced by Super Mario Brothers I have to say, with all the upgrades and points, collect all the keys, go through the doors and get as far as you possibly can. A really nice game this one, really worth uh, tracking down. Uh, Gandalf the Mighty Wizard, not licensed um, from Lord of the Rings or J.R. Tolkien I believe. Monty Python's Flying Circus, placed on the anarchaic um, TV show, which is now a classic. A game isn't a classic, really, but you control Mr. Gumby over different levels, and you must um, collect uh, pieces of his brain to put that back together again. Now, a lot of the time, you will be controlling a fish, here we go, and going through various pipe works trying to find odd bits and pieces. It's a very, very strange game, and very few children would have been able to work out what the hell was going on here, but it would have been good nonetheless. Twin Turbo V8, unlike Outrun, you've got a solid red car here. Um, I now, it's a bit odd this, because I know it's not very good with this, um, sometimes you lose sight of the road with these uh, dots here, but there's a part of it that you want to keep on playing. With a poke on it, you just want to get to the end, and when I did review it, I certainly did do. If you're liking any of these um, snippets here as you're watching these um, update of the 50, check out the full review on the channel, show them a bit of love, do a few comments, or share them social media or wherever you see fit. Valley of Rain's really, really good uh, there. It's like a modern day savage, I suppose. Uh, another homebrew there. You control this rather large sprite in this mystical world and just go forth and blow up everything. Uh, gorgeous graphics uh, there. Sort of like parallax scrolling and good ender level bosses too. Really, really impressed with this one. Valley of Rain's is uh, a cut above the rest. Um, you know, you can't go too far wrong with this one. Really enjoyed playing it. Heaps and heaps and heaps and heaps. 3D Tanks, back to the absolute classics. This is the early 80s. Uh, not much to it, but addictive nonetheless. I would have played it a lot as a kid. You control this gun turret and you must um, stop the enemy tanks going from one side of the uh, bridge to the other one. Every, each time they do, your score will uh, reduce. If your score goes to zero, you've had it. So, you know, try and stop as many as you can. If you hit, uh, get the bullet down the gun turret, the tank will completely explode. Uh, one to two players there, 3D Tanks. Elven Warrior, uh, interesting game, but it's another one of those ones where um, it lets it down with, if you go off the screen come back again, all the enemies uh, regenerate. It's a little bit slow, but graphically it's uh, quite cool. Would have had its fans back in the day. It's not the biggest game in the world, so if you want a short adventure, this is probably one to do. I believe you have to collect uh, three or four potion bottles and then actually escape um, the actual castle or level. It's not bad, but I think there's more exciting examples about the place. Pietro Brothers, another homebrew by the same uh, person, Christian Gonzalez, who did um, um, 
uh, Gandalf. Uh, tries to represent uh, Mario Brothers and does a good job on the ZX Spectrum. Again, you can see multiple colours in the single sprite there, which is um, thumbs up uh, for that one. It takes a little bit of getting used to this one, so if you just use the Spectrum and not Nintendo, you might not know what the hell is going on, but worth persevering with nonetheless. Pietro Brothers, not the Mario Brothers, it's the Pietro Brothers. Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. This is my second favourite Teenage Mutant Turtles game on the ZX Spectrum. I think the other one is slightly bit better based on the arcade uh, coin-up, but this one's got a lot more colour to it. Uh, the characters I don't recognise from the cartoon, a fireman, a big eyeball and a toad and various other things there, but the shading is really well, it moves quite quickly. Um, I'm a little bit uninspired by, by it, but it does look pretty and it would have had its fans back in the day. All the turtles are represented. Konami's Golf. Um, I don't really uh, review golf games on the ZX Spectrum because like tennis it's another one that's uh, tough to um, do but this is okay you've got a map there you've got a selection of clubs you've got wind you've got direction you need to hit the ball out and you've got frustration as well which you get with all go golf games there's no yellow sand though that's a bit of a problem and it does move quite slow but if you're into golf and didn't have any other options it, it might be worth tracking down but I was a bit nonplussed with it Vaps out, this is another homebrew, um, based on burger time again. Uh, was it as good as that other one we've actually uh, covered, Barmy Burgers? Well, it moves a lot quicker, but I prefer Barmy Burgers. I don't know if it's because it's got the, the retro feel about it. As I say, this is a lot smoother. I couldn't really work out how to shoot the pepper spray, if that indeed something you can do here. And it all seems a little bit too um, narrow. But a good game nonetheless, um, as I say, it moves really, really well. And that's the main thing it's got going for it. And the difficulty level isn't too bad either. New York Warriors, this game was awful. Uh, it's a little bit monochrome. The Amiga version wasn't particularly good, but this one is very, very strange indeed. I couldn't get any sound to work on it, so I don't know if there is any sound there. But the, there's, there's too many enemies. And look at that shooting at me at the moment on this. You just can't get past those bullets, and the game is not very enjoyable. It's hard to see what's shooting at you, and the difficulty level is ridiculous. So it's not fun whatsoever. Avoid this one like the plague, New York Warriors. Flunky, another large sprite game. Don Priestley evolved again. You control this servant in the royal family and going around Buckingham Palace you'll see various members of the royal family that need certain tasks doing for them. Prince Andrew, who's since been kicked out of the royal family, uh, wants a duck for his bath. I think Princess Di, here she is. She wants her wig, wherever that may be. And there's a gun on her desk, so if we pick that up, all hell will break loose, will it? I don't know. She'll probably just ignore us. There we go. Boom. Flunky, a very odd game, but fun nonetheless. During Kuyu, um, it's a game that was made uh, as a homebrew um, as a competition in basic there. You control this character that must uh, go forth and uh, get out the castle and collect, or oh, I think he might collect certain objects. Durin Kuyu is a bit of an odd name, but I understand it's named after some uh, cave somewhere. Uh, but Durin Kuyu, uh, well worth tracking down this one. Uh, some people have commented that it wasn't very really smooth compared to other homebrews, but you've got to remember it's controlled in basic. There's a uh, program in basic, there's no compilers here or anything. 750cc Grand Prix. Um, it's all right, this game. What the best bit is, is the game seems to lean, uh, a bit like Just a Girl, the homebrew is trying to do later on. Um, it's possible this version is an unfinished uh, version of beta, but I think because um, some people commented that you actually see the bike handlebars in the forefront, and there does seem to be a lot of the screen um, available uh, hasn't been uh, used. It's, it's okay, but, you know... I, Compared to things like Super Hang On and Enduro Racer, I think those ones play quite a bit better than that. Desperado, another Gunsmoke clone, and I think uh, quite a bit better than Outlaw. Uh, it's got the same sort of flaws again. Uh, the enemies look a bit like uh, um, those baddies from Superman uh, 2, but the end of level bosses are a lot better on this. The, gra the graphics are more detailed, and I do get more of a feel that like I'm in the Wild West. So, out of the two, if you're looking for a Gunsmoke clone, try a Desperado. Uh, this one, as I say, is the better of the two. Don't know if there's any other ones, but they're the two that we've uh, covered. Survivor section or Civili section based on Chaos Engine uh, on the Commodore Amiga, but it's a different game to that. This was a competition to see who could do the best Chaos Engine type sort of game, and this one is absolutely brilliant. Uh, check out this music, uh, designed for the 128k, but it would only sort of like work on a Pentagon system. Um, the movement is quite interesting, it's not direct with the character, you use this a point and click thing and your, your man moves towards there or shoots in that general direction. Survivor section. Aspar GP Master, now this is a Spanish game which I struggle to um, 
um, to decode the instructions. Here we have the computer doing the bike. Because when I did it, I just couldn't control the thing. If the bike's not uh, racing the same way the screen's scrolling, you're just off in the grass and everywhere. I thought this game was hideously flawed and one desperately to be avoided. Um, a racing game with poor controls, terrible. Avoid, 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 avoid. Not a good one. I mean, it's possible you might be able to control it with some time, but, you know, why bother? Desperado 2, I was really hoping this game would build on the strength of Desperado and be a slightly better version of Gunsmoke, but they've avoided it completely. They've gone for this sort of like um, um, 2D scrolling affair, trying to be Robocop in the Wild West. It, it's clever, but, um, you know, because I wanted more, I was a bit depressed with it. The difficulty level was a little bit too tricky. The odd stray bullet would always go up your bottom or somewhere in your back without you realising it. And so I wanted to like it more, but overall I was disappointed, maybe unfairly. Springbot, another really, really, really good homebrew, this one. Look at the scrolling there. You control a spring, so a novel idea as well. Uh, it's another one of these games where you go through various um, stages collecting different objects. Here you have to collect uh, gold and diamonds, as you see, across the top there. Once you've done that, that's it. Um, I'd like to, there to be a sequel on this one, but uh, I do like the colours, I do like the graphics, and the animation is awesome as well. Did a really, really good job. Check out the review of this. The author uh, commented as well, which is always nice, so I've pinned that to the top of the comment section. Leaderboard, uh, another golf game, and this is uh, better than that first one uh, we actually played, so I quite like uh, this. Um, characters all in one colour. It, it seems to load a little bit quicker, although it tends to draw the... Um, way where it draws the actual uh, course there. I just thought it's a bit more intuitive, this one, a bit easier to get the club selection right and the actual swing and stuff. Leaderboard, a really, really, really nice game. Uh, they're the better of the two golf games we've uh, covered. Carlos Sainz, another Spanish game, but um, it's unique in itself. You you need to work out your left and your right, because it seems to flip around as you turn around. And selecting the right tyres and gearbox and everything is important as well. But this is, once you get used to it, don't, I was hopeless at it, but once you get used to it, this would be a really, really nice game. There's various different levels. You need to get the quickest time you, you possibly can to win the actual championship. But a nice, large sprite there. Um, as I say, left and right are opposite when you're going down, and I could never figure it out, because I'm a duffer. Papyrus and Mummy's Legacy, another one of these cool homebrews. We're reviewing quite a few homebrews now. They tend to go on a Wednesday, so check them out if you haven't already. Uh, again, this is another good one. A lot of these have been made by um, uh, designers, um, made by Jonathan Caldwell, who's an absolute genius. Without him, a lot of games couldn't actually have happened. But you can try this guy, this guy I think, in Ancient Egyptian Tombs. We've got to collect nine or so scrolls and then escape. Each screen has got a different puzzle, and they are really well thought out here. They haven't just plonked stuff anywhere. Gregory loses his clock, the last of the large sprite games we've um, covered. Gregory's had his uh, alarm clock um, stolen by a ghost when he's asleep, and he's been trapped in the sleeping underworld, and in his dreamlike state, he must solve a number of uh, things. Here we need to get a tap off here, and get his clock back so he can wake up or be forever asleep, which doesn't seem like a bad thing at all. He wouldn't have to go to work or worry about anything at all. There's Gregory in his magenta pyjamas. What a cool kid. Hooray! Wild West, I really, really love this game. It's right in an era from what I like, but uh, it's a shooter basically, but you just control this um, cowboy's head and you must shoot everything on the screen to get to the next level. Although there's a bit of a flaw, I think it's a flaw, I can't see that they would have done it on purpose. If you just drive, um, go off on the left, it'll take you to the next level anyway. Uh, there's a, um, uh, a good horse that comes past and uh, a bank to rob and a train that goes past as well. But as a kid, uh, it's quite simple. Um, you'll be playing this forever and ever and ever and ever. Really, really good. Time for... No, this is Jumping Jupiter. The stage is called Time for Tea. Um, my review on this one lasted much longer than I intended to. I think it was about 25, 26 minutes. But it's uh, influenced by Manic Miner. Uh, but it does enough different on its own. Very odd music going on, but I'm a fan of that. And I was playing this for a long, long time. I really, really love Jumping Jupiter. I love the graphics. I love the sound. And I think it's one of my favourite homebrews that we've covered uh, so far. And that's saying something, because they've all been of a very, very high standard. Outrun, the best thing about this game is the music and uh, probably the uh, the smoke behind the car when it takes off, but it just moves very, very slow. Uh, in particular, when there's a lot of scenery to draw, it, it's just almost at a standstill like it's not moving. It certainly doesn't feel like you're going 200 plus kilometers uh, an hour. The music is by far the best uh, on, on this um, and you spend, it's worth it just for that, but the game itself Ferrari is transparent, it looks like it's green, and it could have done a bit better, but keep telling yourself it's outrun as a day.
back in the day I would have played it a bit. So Cave Mania, uh, the, the jumping of this is really, really flawed and hard to predict, but it's good graphics. Essentially you control this caveman and you must collect three eggs from one side of the screen and then get them back all to the his home cave to have some breakfast. Uh, if you make any mistakes at all, the egg will break and you have to go back and get it. It's all right, uh, it's just that the playability isn't particularly there. It's another one of these great graphics, playability is a bit iffy, but with a bit of practice and you get you to avoiding volcanoes, it might be better. Redshift, a really, really good homebrew this. Uh, it's a shooter, it's a bit sparing on the colours, it's a little bit homebrew, but between each of these bases or ships we're flying over, there is a bit of colour with the different uh, planets. Three uh, difficulty levels, easy, medium and uh, hard. Um, destroy um, uh, well, at least one galaxy in, in the one universe and it's off to the next galaxy. So a lot here, some good set of power-ups. Also, I'm quite rubbish generally at shoot 'em ups and I survived quite a lot of time uh, to get off the first galaxy. Grizor, as it was known in the arcades as Contra, don't know why they changed the uh, name. Uh, there's a number of ideas in the comment section why that would have actually been. But again, it's a good shooter. I'm not a big fan of stage two. It's has you running down corridors, but someone gave me some tips how to do that. But it moves quite well uh, for the ZX Spectrum. There's no colour clash. They've solved that quite well. If you want to, you can duck down into the uh, water. There we go. But make sure you don't get shot. I've been shot in the eye. Oh, my goodness. Good game, sort of. Ian Botham's Tetris Match. Now, this is a bad game. Not sort of. It is a bad game. Um, cricket is always going to be a, a hard um, one to reproduce. But you select your bowlers and batters, select their names, select the positions of the fielders, and then pretty much you're just a spectator. Man, this is boring. Now, I do know I rip into times off of that awful games, but they could have done a bit better here. Um, absolutely terrible. There's no real reason to go back to this. Ian Botham, um, I don't know. I, I'm sure you didn't um, see this game before it was released. Terrible. Moon Ranger, uh, another homebrew again, based on the arcade Moon Patrol. Uh, there's a game called Moon Alert that came out on the ZX Spectrum Converted at the time, but it was nowhere near. Well, it was a good game, but it wasn't sophisticated as uh, this one. Control your buggy over the moon terrain, jump over craters, and avoid getting shot by the aliens to go from base A all the way through to base C. Can you do it? Well, you might be able to. Good music uh, bumping all the way through this one. I am a fan. Moon Ranger. Boom. Cavern Fighter, based on the arcade cabinet as Scramble. Um, moves quite well, but we played it with a poke on it. Um, my one gripe about this game, although it's colourful enough and the, the retro sounds are there, it's just too difficult. Look how narrow the uh, caverns are, and if you uh, touch anything by the nearest pixels, you will uh, die. Yeah, do check out Penetrator as well, which is another conversion of a Scramble. Uh, Again, that was too difficult and wasn't as pretty as this one, but this one is just way too difficult. Way too difficult. Icebreaker, quite a unique uh, game, this one. You in this toboggan or this speedboat or whatever it is, going through this uh, gully or bobsleigh, if you will, you must collect fuel so you don't run out of the stuff um, and get to the end before the time runs out. There's different weapons there and objects to um, avoid. It does get devilishly difficult as you go further in, but as a kid, I would have loved this because I would have felt like I was some kind of crazy James Bond character. It's all in Spanish, so I had to guess what I was doing to a degree, but, um, you know, it's quite easy to get into it. UFO, a homebrew time again. Uh, great platformer, moves quite smoothly here, and it's got a level of addiction as well. Uh, you must go through collecting certain objects without bumping into stuff. Gives you five lives to start with, and what's good about this game is you've got a, sort of like a jetpack, as you can see by the propulsion there, 200. Use all those you're doing, but by landing, landing again, it does uh, regenerate. So it's all about timing and learning stuff, collecting keys and going through white doors. Um, you know, what, 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 oh dear, I died there. What could you ask for more? Uh, Mad Cars, this is Formula One. You're going down a straight road it's very basic I suppose um, it hasn't aged particularly well but just last as far as you can in this car going past Formula One cars if you crash into them you'll burst into flames uh, it's a bit unfair gameplay when you go across these puddles it knock you sideways because the road does get a lot narrower than this way there we go but as a kid uh, with not much else to do and not much comparison I would have played this quite a bit although it's not the greatest game in the world mad cars there's not much madness there Earthlight, really, really clever game. This playing it on the 128k. Um, you're in some sort of crazy galaxy controlling this ship, and you must collect matter transporters in this 3D type affair. Um, they're sort of like uh, square blocks, about two or three on each level, and then return to base without getting killed. You've got fuel, you've got shields, and I think you know what happens if those run out. 
So get past these sentinels. You can actually fly if you want to at different heights uh, there or just go across the ground. But don't bash into anything. Just got a matter transporter. Magenta Jim, since reviewing this, 128k version has come out with great music. But here's the 48k without music. Um, different levels. I think it's inspired slightly by uh, Pac-Man. But plays really well. I really enjoy this one. A real smooth mover. Collect all the coins. Avoid all the robots. Get to the next stage. Takes a while to learn the uh, strategy. But once you do, it's very, very very addictive so this is a 48k version if you're going to track it down track down the 128k version which adds a bit with the sound as well brilliant game Paris to Dakar by Codemasters and um, you know this game was a bit flawed uh, it's you can control a truck a motorbike or a car um, each have different damage levels depending on which one you have um, it's way too uh, difficult and it's really hard to see where you're going on this and it's not a game I would have come back to um, a great deal uh, really, really um, uh, lacking there. It's a bit similar to that other bike game we looked at a little bit early on. Similar engine, but you know, it's too difficult and there's not much to want to go uh, back to to play it again. So thank you for watching this uh, roundup there. I hope you liked having a, a look at that. That was ZX Spectrum Games reviewed on the channel, 601 through to 650. Uh, as I say, if you liked any of those, please track down the full reviews uh, on the uh, channel. Excellent stuff. So thank you very much. Uh, please share this if you liked it. And until next time, take great care of yourself and a very fond goodbye. Goodbye.